Subtracting large numbers, less than 52. Your objectives, use the subtraction algorithm to subtract four, five, and six digit numbers. Use estimation to check for reasonableness. Use rounding to estimate the difference for a word problem. And I just wanted to go over with you the word algorithm. And basically all an algorithm is, all that means, is that is the steps that you take in a problem to make it work. So in addition, it's something plus something. That's the addition algorithm. In subtraction, it's something minus something. Okay, that's all that means. Fancy word doesn't mean much. Okay, we're going to practice subtracting large numbers. Notice that I have this set up with ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and hundred thousands. This is your place value. You always want to make sure that everything is kept nice and in order. All right, so now when you're subtracting, same as with addition, you always are going from left to right. So you start with the ones column. All right, so let's see. We have zero, we want to take away nine, so we need to borrow and regroup. So we're taking away one of the tens, that becomes two, and now we have ten ones. Ten ones minus nine ones is one. Now we have two tens, we want to subtract eight tens, can't do it, so we're going to borrow from our hundreds, so we're going to leave one hundred there, and we're going to put um, ten tens right there, so now we have twelve tens, minus eight tens, and that leaves us four tens. So now we move on to the next column, and we have one, and we want to take away seven. That's not going to work either. So we have to borrow. So we're taking away this, it becomes a zero, and we're adding this here, and eleven minus seven is four. And now on this one right here, we're going to go ahead and borrow from the hundred thousands. So now we have five hundred thousands, and we're going to put this right here. Ten minus five is five. Five minus one is four. So far, so good. Now let's check our work. Okay, so the way we want to check our work is we're going to take these two numbers here, and we're going to go ahead and add them together and see if it matches the top number. Nine plus one is ten. Carry your one. Eight plus four is twelve, plus one is thirteen. Carry the one. Seven plus four is eleven, plus one is twelve. Carry the one. Five plus five is ten, plus one is eleven. Carry the one. Four plus one is five, plus one is six. And presto. Check. We've done it. All right, let's move on. In example one, 36,152 tickets were sold for the first baseball game. 9,415 fewer tickets were sold for the second game. How many were sold for the second game? All right, so a key here is they're asking you how many fewer, and that means you're going to subtract. Another hint was this whole thing is about subtraction, but don't worry about that part. Okay, so we're going to take our 36,000, and we're going to put that right up at the top here. And then notice what I've done with the 9,415. I don't start it here because it doesn't, it's not um, two digits over here. So I start here, and I put 5, 1, 4, 9 in that direction because I always have to line it up. And so we do our subtraction, and you see how we borrowed. We get 26,737 tickets sold for the game. If you need to, pause this and see what I did here. But to check it, we're going to take again these two numbers. We add them up. We end up with 36,152. We've got a match, and yay, we win. Let's move on. In example two, a charity received a contribution of $5,000. The charity spent $2,386 the first month. How much of the contribution remained after that first month? 
So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the money that they spent from the money that they received. This will line up perfectly. We have our 5000 and then right below it we write 2386 You can see how it's all nicely lined up. You also know we're going to be borrowing like crazy over here because there's three zeros. Alright, so let's take a look. We have zero and we want to take away six. We have to borrow, um, but there's nothing here. We have to borrow, but there's nothing here. We have to now go over to the thousands and we're going to borrow 4,000. So we make this a four. And this is one way to do it. You'll learn it faster later, but for now I want you to understand why it works this way. And so we're going to put one of the thousands here. But that still doesn't help us in the ones um, column. So we take away one of those. This is now nine. And we go ahead and put it right here in the tens column. Still doesn't help us in the ones column, so we borrow it. It becomes nine. Now we have ten ones we can work with. Ten minus six is four. Nine minus eight is one. Nine minus three is six. Four minus two is two. All right. So, um, I just want you to think about it this way. You see up here where it says 499, it looks like 499 right there, okay? So, what I want you to see is that 499 times 10 is 4,990, and then if I add these 10 ones right here, I end up with 5,000. That's how we can do this. There are faster ways to do it, but I want you to think about it. That's why I've written it out here. 5,000 equals 499 tens plus 10 ones. It's very, very true. Okay? And so we can also look at this and say, if we wanted to, is this a reasonable answer? Well, we have 5,000 is already rounded off. We have 2,386, which we can round off to 2,000. 5,000 minus 2,000 is 3,000. Is that close to 2,614? And the answer is yes, because you could round off the 2,614 to 3,000. So you're right in the ballpark. Example three. In 2006, the estimated population of Burbank, California was 102,049. The estimated population of Berkeley, California was 103,359. About how many more people live in Berkeley? All right, so let's go ahead and round this off. 102,049 rounds to 102,000. 103,359 rounds to 103,000. If you need to pause and see how I rounded it to that number, and remember, we're kind of looking to see the next number. So we have a one, one, zero, zero, two, three, and so let's just look at the next column. That's kind of how I did it, but I want you to make sure you know that. So 103,000 minus 102,000 equals 1,000. About 1,000 more people live in Berkeley. What would happen if we rounded to the nearest 100,000? Do you know? Can you look at that? It's possible that if we rounded to the nearest 100,000, both of those would be 100,000 and so they would have shown no difference. Try it. Okay, for your lesson practice, we're gonna do a quick little review, and then you're on your own, all right? So, this is how it works. You have four, you wanna take away eight, you have to borrow, this is a two, there's now your 14, and that should, yeah, there we go. So 14 minus eight is six, you have two minus six, you have to borrow and regroup. So here's four and that's now 12. So 12 tens minus six tens is six. You have four minus two and that's two and four minus three is one. All right, let's take a look at this one. We have five, we wanna take away seven. We can't, so we borrow. This is now a four and now we have 15 ones. 15 minus seven is eight. We have four, we want to take away nine, we can't do that. This becomes a two, and that becomes 14 tens. 14 tens minus nine tens is five tens. 
We have a 2, we want to take away 6, we can't do that either, so we have to borrow and regroup. This becomes a 5, that becomes 12 hundreds, 12 hundred minus 600 is 6 hundreds, and 5 minus 0 is 5, 2 minus 1 is 1. And then the last one, you can see we're going to need to borrow. I'm going to do this, I'm going to ask you to try to understand this, because I'm going to take a little bit of a leap. We have two zeros here. I'm going to go over here. This is going to be 1. I'm just going to automatically make this 9 and make that 10. If you have trouble figuring out why I've done that, remember how we did that on the other one. Okay, and you might want to go back and take a look. So I have 10 minus 9 is 1. 9 minus 8 is 1. 1 minus 7 is not going to happen. So we have to borrow and regroup. 11 minus 7 is 4. 2 minus 1 is 1. 7 minus 5 is 2. And then we just bring down the 6 because there's nothing to subtract there. Okay, do your written practice, check your work, enjoy your day mastering math. You're going to do fantastic.